We're going to go on now to uh, Scott Steinman, who's going to share with us his thoughts on uh, resection arthroplasty with the uh, interpositional graft jacket. Thanks, Scott. Scott's tired. Did a reverse shoulder, so give him some love. Uh, well, it wasn't that hard, but it's uh, the hard part. It's 24 degrees here and snowing, David. So I want to in California. Luxury, luxury. <laughs> Well, actually, this past weekend, Mel and I were at the arthroscopy meeting in Phoenix, and we had a nice discussion about arthroscopic uh, uh, options. Um, and disclosures. Um, well, if you think back to the uh, past 40 years, uh, most of what we've been speaking about tonight uh, since the Cold War, there ha everything begins with taking the trapezium out and then doing something, um, a suspension plasty or something, weave. And I guess the, the question that uh, myself and uh, Lee and, and, and David and others might ask is, do we really need to take out an entire bone or resurface that, that, uh, that joint itself and try and preserve the normal anatomy as much as uh, possible? Well, CMC interposition arthroplasty was, as Lee mentioned, uh, the late uh, uh, Jay Menon uh, initially uh, described using many different uh, materials, including Gore-Tex, which was actually uh, not very successful. They ended up having to take a lot of those out. But as you can see, Palmer's longest, fasciolata, and the FCR uh, in interposition in, in some, of these, uh, some of these patients. Uh, his results, uh, like a lot of the open procedures, showed about 75% good, good to excellent, uh, excellent results. Uh, and those that required uh, revision uh, were those that actually had the uh, uh, Gore-Tex material placed. We presented our, our technique uh, in 2005, uh, Dr. Adams, Dr. Berger, uh, and I, and uh, Alex Padilla also, uh, more recently in 2008, also uh, described the technique using the uh, polyurethane uh, polymer, as Lee uh, had described a, a little bit uh, earlier. Uh, basically, the technique uh, is fairly straightforward, using a pneumatic uh, tourniquet, um, using uh, suspension, of just the thumb. Uh, I've seen some people include index, but uh, we haven't found that to be necessary, about five to eight pounds. And I think it's helpful if you're starting out doing this is to not be a member of the wrong joint club and use fluoro to be sure you're in the CMC joint and not in the SD joint. And uh, I haven't found insufflation really that be that necessary in that joint as opposed to the elbow or potentially the wrist. Um, and as has already been discussed, you want to make a small incision and be careful not to uh, cut any of the sensory nerves, so just a small uh, incision. Essentially using the same instruments you are all familiar with using for a regular wrist arthroscopy, uh, the, the 2.7 arthroscope, the 3 millimeter shaver, uh, RF probe for a shrinkage, as Lee uh, discussed, and using the burr. I have used the uh, larger uh, arthroscopic in, uh, instruments that I might use for elbow arthroscopy, but uh, and they are quite bulky, and uh, uh, although you can certainly resect a trapezium pretty quickly with a large burr, um, uh, it's ergonomic. Uh, the portals, uh, the one U and one R, as described uh, initially by my partner, <coughs> Berger, um, and uh, I think ultimately the best way to think of this is the one R is going to be just just uh, radial to the FCR tendon uh, actually keeps you a little bit more out of trouble than the one you uh, hugging the first compartment by the EPB uh, tendon. When you're at the, in the, in the first uh, uh, ulnar compartment, compartment uh, portal, you can look over and look at the AOL, as, as, as Lee showed, and then the one R, you can look over more toward the dorsal radial and the posterior oblique uh, ligament. I reported our, our, our results uh, initially, uh, and again, the results weren't any better uh, right off the bat than any open uh, procedure. Uh, patients were uh, relatively satisfied. You know, like a lot of these studies, uh, about the 70, 75 percent uh, success rate, uh, and of course, uh, patients tend to always say they want to have the operation over again, um, as, in, as in any other procedure for that matter. Here you can see an example uh, uh, starting out. You can see the needle uh, being placed into the CMC joint to be sure I'm in that joint and not the ST joint. Uh, and I've, I've been in the ST joint. I, I do actually use this arthroscopic technique for ST arthritis um, as opposed to doing a, a formal fusion. But you can see the <clears throat> before and after um, uh, on the right after interposition and placement of a, uh, of a dermal graft. 
Uh, you can see loose bodies. You can see the AOL. You can take a, a trip around the CMC joint. Uh, but essentially, these three pictures kind of, kind of show at the upper left uh, where you have the typical uh, saddleback uh, and, and deformity. Uh, the burr comes in after initial acidovectomy, and the burr uh, brings it down to the upper right, which is a bleeding. Obviously, the tourniquet's up, but uh, a, a, a cancellate surface uh, that, is, uh, that would uh, potentially allow for healing, the healing elements. Uh, we did a, a study here um, looking uh, at a, sort of a poor man CMC joint, we used the, the dog model where we took out the lunate and placed a dermal graft uh, into um, the resected the lunate uh, with decortication of the surrounding carpal bones and showed that uh, a dermal graft uh, can heal uh, to the denuded, uh, uh, decorticated uh, um, bones, which is uh, encouraging since we obviously don't do retrieval studies, uh, hopefully, on our own CMC patients. Uh, you can see here, this is basic setup. You uh, hopefully a friend to the OR, OR with you. Um, it's uh, depending on your otoscopic setup, and again, only thumb traction. Then again, uh, viewing uh, from the one U, and then eventually uh, switching uh, to, to the one R. Here you can see viewing for the one U, which is hugging the first compartment, and the one R uh, is actually just, I think, uh, as uh, uh, Dr. Chow described, is actually just radial uh, to the FCR tendon. That tends to put you a little bit further away from the artery, from branches of the artery and, and branches of the nerve. I uh, see what, oh, looks like it's playing. That's quite nice. So initially what I've left out here is uh, when you first get in there, you're just trying to create a space and see, and I use a, a, a synovial shaver for that. Once I've obtained a view and used the RF probe, not so much for shrinkage, but I want to de uh, delineate the entire trapezium and here you can see we have the burr in there. And uh, until you actually are resected about uh, two to three millimeters, it can be uh, quite trying to actually see in there. And here we're sort of uh, finishing uh, things off. And one thing I would caution about is the center of the trapezium. It's sort of, not, uh, sort of a soft area, so to speak. And you want to make sure you get the, uh, as uh, David said, the osteophytes immediately. And uh, here we're pulling out some, some of those bodies. But it's tempting just to create a, a bowl, so to speak. But you need to get the uh, corticolitis, both uh, particularly medially and out laterally. And um, clearly what we're doing here is not, not recreating normal anatomy. We're, we're uh, flattening out the trapezium, taking the saddle shape out of it. And here you can see uh, a dermal graft. Uh, typically, I'll cut it in half. Uh, that'll give about a three millimeter uh, thickness. And my nurse called this uh, putting Kleenex back in the box. You're trying to pull the graft in. It can be a little trying. But you don't want to make too big a portal. And this looks like a down, down comforter being spread on the bed here. And uh, after I've spread the, uh, spread the, uh, the graft on top of the uh, denuded uh, trapezium, I spread it out with the probe, as you can see. Um, and I do not use a, a pin to hold that in place. But uh, this is a procedure where I will hold the, um, hold the thumb um, abducted and reduced while uh, my assistants uh, place the um, uh, thumb spike a cast around the thumb because I think that if this moves, if the thumb moves too uh, early in the post-operative period, um, you will not get adherence of the uh, graft to the denuded trapezium. Uh, here we can see again, this is the graft being, being placed in. And I would caution against making uh, the portals too, um, too big. I have uh, a couple uh, instances where the graft uh, patient came back in two weeks. And I'm looking at a little piece of the graft. Uh, the Kleenex is starting to come out of the box. Um, and if you make a small portal, it tends to trap uh, the graft in there, uh, place into, into the spike of cast. Here's an example on the left, preoperative bone on bone, and then postoperative with the graft uh, in place. Uh, again, a 55-year-old male, uh, same thing, graft in place. And you can see a very little resection of the trapezium, trying to preserve as much normal anatomy as possible here in a 60-year-old. Um, and this is, a, I think, uh, this is a mentioned earlier, this uh, study. Uh, very small numbers, you can see 10, 10 and 5. This is the, uh, what little that's out there, which uh, we need to actually improve upon, of uh, uh, complete resection versus interposition. And there was a trend toward a better key pinch and, and grip strength in those that actually uh, uh, had just the uh, space replaced and minimal uh, re resection. So in summary, I would say that uh, some CMC are at the show debridement. Uh, I think it's helpful for uh, osteoarthritis. Um, there are no prospective studies to date comparing to open procedures. And I would definitely say it is not better uh, than suspension plaster or LRTI. 
Uh, and if you're happy with those open procedures in your practice, or, uh, I would continue doing them. I don't think this is uh, any better than those, and uh, therefore I'm not encouraging the switch uh, to this, uh, but it's not worse. Uh, I, haven't, uh, I haven't opened up a, a thumb uh, in probably about uh, six years. Uh, I can think of about three or four failures that I've had, um, but nice thing about a failure is it's almost virgin territory, and you can do, I prefer a Wildby suspension plasty and uh, failures. And it's almost uh, like like uh, you haven't operated on on the thumb at that at that point. As I mentioned, it does attempt to preserve normal anatomy, doesn't burn burn a bridge, and the patients sure like the two small little holes. I had one patient uh, who I didn't open early on in the series open uh, uh, resection uh, while be on one side, and then she came back and said, "I have this new technique uh, that I like that like that I think may be better or or might work just as well." Uh, and when I remember halfway through the procedure, I said, what, what a fool I am because uh, you never want to talk the patient into uh, another operation. And they're very happy with their other side. But in the end, I asked her what, uh, after about a year follow-up, what she liked better, her uh, open side or her arthroscopic side. And she liked her arthroscopic side. And I can tell you, I thought objectively uh, the open was better. Uh, but I think there's a, a, an arthroscopic perception that patients have. Um, and uh, we have to, be, uh, have to re recognize that to, to a certain extent. And again, uh, these two guys, uh, I think since Apple has kind of let them go, they're I think, working for arthroscopic companies now, and uh, <laughs> uh, you can be a little bit uh, um, a little older, and uh, you know, of course you have to open the joint, or you can be an arthroscopist. So um, uh, I guess those are some, some options. But thank you very much. That's great, Scott. Thanks. Uh, we've got a 10-minute discussion coming up, so I'll ask you just one question, but uh, you know, your study in Belgium Orthopedic 2007 with 11 dogs, poor little puppies, um, you had an eight-week follow-up. Um, you know, Alfred, uh, Al Swafford has done a bunch of these, too. You know him. And he's had uh, some cases of, um, of reaction and synovitis to the graft jacket. Have you seen that long-term? What's your experience with that? I, I've, I've not seen that uh, long-term. Uh, people have mentioned different uh, dermal products, uh, uh, and it's hard to sort them out. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of these products have been used a lot more in the rotator cuff uh, application, and uh, it's been scary. Uh, some some of the products which are uh, processed so heavily that they're almost like uh, foreign material. But I've not noticed that in uh, in, in my practice uh, a reaction to the uh, graft jacket that that I, um, I currently use. And as I mentioned in my disclosure, I'm a consultant for 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 Wright. That that should be that should be stated. I had a question for you, David. You have a very eloquent uh, portal that you use in the, uh, in the in the web space. Maybe you could describe your, your use to that for um, for arthroscopy. Yeah, it's just for uh, people who aren't as skilled as you are. Um, it's the best way to pick off the radial artery that I know of. <laughs> and, uh, when we have time, if anyone's interested, I'll give them the citation. Um, just a quick one. John Free asked, well, if the Kleenex is coming out of the box, why don't you pin it? I actually uh, I tried a few times, and Al actually uh, does does uh, uh, pin the back back in California. I do yeah. worry uh, that that you'll I'll spin the uh, spin the graft and uh, wrap wrap it up. And and uh, as Lee kind of mentioned, uh, you know some of the problems that he's seen have occurred actually using uh, a, a pin. Um, and I've I've found that if I if I hold uh, these patients, and we should talk a little bit about postoperative, I I use the same post-opera protocol than do for open procedures. So this is not faster. And, and I think we all recognize that these CMC patients with <coughs> open or arthroscopic uh, take a good three to six months or even longer to really improve. This is not an appendectomy at, at, at all. And so I'll hold these patients uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a cast. I put them in a cast for six weeks uh, post-operatively and then in a splint after that. So it's exactly the same treatment as uh, many of us do for uh, open procedures. Thanks, Scott. Uh, audience should realize that even though we're talking about excellent experiential um, studies here, everything's level four or expert experience. We just don't have the literature to uh, differentiate between one type of procedure over the other. So I think the case that Scott and others make, that if you have a procedure that you're happy with, stick with it.